The next thing we're going to consider is how to refine our root locus to get more accurate J omega axis crossing points. And so remember, the importance of these is that the crossing points are going to separate us from stable operation to unstable operation. And so we can say the gain at the crossing point is going to correspond to our maximum stable gain. So gain at our crossing point is typically going to be our max stable gain. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so our max stable gain. And so that's assuming that our root locus is starting in the left half plane. So assuming root locus starts in the left half plane, but that's not always the case. So if we had instead the root locus starting in the right half plane, then our J omega axis crossing would actually be the minimum stable gain. And so again, typically we'll have uh, a, our poles in the left half plane for our open loop transfer function such that it's going to correspond to our maximum stable gain. But keep in mind that's not necessarily always the case. And so the frequency at the crossing is going to be our frequency of oscillation. So frequency at our J omega axis crossing gives us our frequency of oscillation. And so what do I mean by frequency of oscillation? So that's just the frequency of our signal, our response in the time domain. And again, let's always be sort of in the back of our mind thinking about how that relates to a physical system. So whether that's some position, like in our elevator example, um, so maybe it's oscillating up and down about its final position. And so, of course, if we're talking about stability and J omega axis crossings, we can go back to the old tools that we've developed before, which is our Routh table. So we can determine our crossing info using a Routh table. Okay, and so within our Routh table, there was one particular sort of instance that we said was able to give us our, our J omega crossing, and that was if we have a row of zeros. So what we want to do then is to select our gain K to make a row of zeros. Okay, so we want a row of zeros in our Routh table, and we can adjust our gain, our, our gain value K to get that. And so keep in mind, if we don't have a row of zeros, we have no possibility of a J omega axis poles. Um, we can have a row of zeros and still not have J omega axis poles, but in this case, if we know the shape of our root locus and we know it's crossing the J omega axis, we know there should exist some gain value to give us that. So what we can do once we figure out that K, that K value from our Routh table is we can take that back to, uh, to get our frequency of oscillation. So we're gonna do that by using the row above where we calculated the row of zeros. So using our calculated K value, go to our row above our row of zeros. And so this would be where we got our auxiliary polynomial when we were talking about our Routh tables. And what we want to do is we want to solve the polynomial find our frequency of oscillation. And so we're gonna look at how to do all of that in an example in the next video, but one thing that we wanna keep in mind is, of course, as we're finding these Routh tables, we need to have our closed loop transfer function. So we need our closed loop transfer function. And so far when we've been looking at our root locus and plotting that, we've been looking at our open loop transfer function. Um, but of course with our Ralph table, we need that T of S. And so keep in mind that it can be useful to use tools like MATLAB. So we've seen how to use our, our control toolbox to, use our, to do our system reduction. So definitely take advantage of that in order to get that T of S. Then we can construct our Ralph table find our K value, use that polynomial above that row of zeros, 
and get our frequency of oscillation.